Today we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of different types of pond liner. So today, this morning, I woke up early and I was gathering all my questions for uh, that the Ask the Pond Digger show. And I got another one from Pedro Martinez and it kind of shocked me because I've been getting this question asked a lot about RPE liner. So uh, I have two different types of pond liner here today. I have an RPE liner, which is reinforced polyethylene. And I have the, the 45 mil EPDM rubber liner that we use all the time. Now, uh, Pedro asks me, you know, he's thinking about getting some liner. He, he wants to know the advantages and disadvantages between the two. And it kind of struck me because I've had a lot of people asking me about RPE liner lately. And I mean in smaller projects, not the larger projects. To be clear, I use RPE liner. I use it a couple times a year when we do very large projects. We're talking like three quarters of an acre, a third acre ponds, big ponds that are open and long. And um, let, me, let me get into the basics on these two different liners. This is RPE, reinforced polyethylene. And you can see it's kind of, it's pretty sturdy. It's not very flexible. You know, I have, I can do some curves on it and stuff. If you look at it real close, I don't know if you can see, but if you look at it real close, it, it looks woven. It's reinforced, RPE. So you see like little dots in there. And some people question that it can even hold water. And I can, I guarantee you it holds water. It's a good liner. Then we have the, the 45 mil EPDM rubber liner. You can see it's a way more flexible. I can't even hold it out straight without, you know, really working at it. See how it wants to fall? This one, just hold it out, no problem like that. Let me show you some advantages and disadvantages of the two different types of liners. Once again, I use them both. I use this RPE on very large projects. And on this one, that 45 mil EPDM, I use it on small projects. Up to pretty big, big ponds. I mean, we'll do, you know, 100 foot long waterfalls. We'll do small four by six ponds. We'll do 50 by 40 ponds with this, with a lot of intricate shapes. And we're gonna be putting rock in the pond. This can handle a lot of compression, so you can put, a two ton rock on it, no problem, and press it down. This stuff doesn't like, doesn't have the compression that this particular liner does. So you can put rock on this liner, but I'd be a little more careful about doing that. So there's a couple of differences. Uh, if I'm doing an excavation in, a, in an ornamental pond in a backyard, koi pond, water garden, we'll call you, uh, I'm doing shelves, and so I'm having a lot of um, 90 degree cuts in my excavation, and as you'll see this, 45 mil EPDM rubber liner can make cuts very easy like that, some, that shape. And you can do curves and, and with this one, it's not quite as easy. We can get it, but it's a little harder to, to, to work with. And then when I start putting curves and, and radius in there, it, um, you know, it's just not, it's not as friendly to work with. So on small backyards, I would say off the top of my head, this product is probably 30% cheaper. And on most ornamental backyard ponds, I don't think the cost of the liner 30% off is really that much of a difference, especially when it prolongs the installation and makes it more complicated. Let me show you again. This is 45 mil EPDM rubber liner. I mean, I can wad it up in a ball like this, put it in your back pocket. See that? Boom, pop it right back out. Go to town, go to work, put it in shape, no problem. If I do this with the RPE, not quite as workable and you start to see the creases come up in that liner. See that crease in there? So now it's kind of taking on that shape. So it's it's a little harder to work with if I start to, to work it around. So you know it, it seals the same uh, as far as when we're doing the faceplate seals on the water on the on the tanks that we might be using, waterfall filters, bottom drains, all that stuff's pretty much the same. You're gonna do the same penetrations, the same um, applications on mechanical seals. If you get a hole in this, uh, you can they talk about puncture puncturability. So I got a, a pencil. I didn't I didn't push through it that hard. And that's the real test. When you get to the science, science behind it, they tell you a certain uh, tensile strength. This took a lot of, did you see how long that, I mean, I haven't punctured it yet, and you see that pliability in that 45 mil. 
either way, a pencil can puncture either one of these liners pretty good. So I don't think there's really a contest of which one can handle more pressure, you know? I think it's really about application. I was t trying to touch one thing before I started jamming pencils through here, is about uh, if you get a hole in this particular liner, I have a hole in there now, you, you can heat weld this in the field. You either heat weld it, or you use a very special tape to, uh, to seal this. This, you're not gonna heat weld this in the field. You're gonna put a tape and a patch and a, a primer on there. The primer makes it kind of melt a little bit into the two pieces so they bond together. So there's uh, some differences like that. Stretchability, this doesn't stretch at all. I mean, this doesn't stretch one single bit. This stretches, look at that. I don't know the percent that it goes, but it's quite a bit. So <clears throat> I just wanna get down to the bottom of it. If you, if you need to save 30%, uh, on a small backyard ornamental pond and you want to go with the RPE, I say go for it, but just remember you're going to have some longer time putting it together. On my construction team, imagine how much construction, how much liner we move on the pond installs that we do every year. For my company to save the 30%, it's not worth it to me because we can move so much faster, so much more efficiently. I can make the shapes more general. Um, so there you have it. Once again, I still have more information on this. I'm gonna keep it coming at you. On this, when we do very large projects, usually I have a three to one slope, so a very gentle, a gentle cut in the excavation, and then we typically put eight to 12 inches of sand on top of this. Imagine, we're talking a third of an acre, half an acre ponds and up. You know, we'll put 12 inches of sand on here, you can drive a car right into it, or a truck right into the, into the pond and not worry about it. And uh, this, you can either put this in the bottom of a pond, if it's a koi pond, you can have leave it blank. If you're doing a water garden, you can put the rock and gravel on it. So I think I covered that pretty well. I gave you a lot of, uh, a lot of differences between the two liners. So you can make your choice, Pedro, and the rest of the people that have been asking me about it. So uh, I'm going to end the day with the question of the day. And I'm going to ask you, which liner do you have in your pond? If, for all you people out here that have pond liners, I want to know what liner you're using. And now that you have the details and you're getting ready to purchase liner, which one are you going to choose? That's it, have a great day. Mm -hmm.